Before I start, let me just ask really quickly, who here thinks they have done service before? All right. Now, who here thinks they know what the word service means? I've asked quite a few people if they know what the word means, and either I don't get a response or this is the sort of response I get. Hmm. Service. Isn't that like donating clothes or money to the homeless? Or this is the type of response I get. Don't you have to do service for that international school you go to? Why don't you just go to the orphanage down the road, donate some clothes, and get it over with? That's right. Get it over with. Here is the problem. Ladies and gentlemen, this response tells me absolutely nothing about service. This is what I like to call pity charity. This response is exactly describing pity charity. One of our greatest problems today is that the line between service and charity is blurred. Because we stick with our framed understanding of service, true service is difficult to find nowadays. Over the past couple of years, I've had the opportunity to redefine what service means to me and how I see service. And my aim for today is to help redefine your understanding of service. Let me take you back to 2014. A tiny little freshman, 14-year-old me, travels to Vietnam as a part of a school trip. It wasn't that big of a deal for me. I knew we were going to be sightseeing and visiting a couple of orphanages. But when we arrived at the orphanage, the sisters that worked at the orphanage described to us why the children were there. The children, she said, on the second floor are severely disabled. However, you must remember one thing. They can comprehend everything you say and everything you do. The children were disabled both mentally and physically as a consequence of the biochemical weapon, Agent Orange, used in the U.S. Vietnam War. Children were supposed to spend their childhoods laughing and playing out in the sun, but instead they laid in these rows of beds, waiting as their life succumbed to their disability. I walked reluctantly around the rows of beds, and I brought myself to this toddler that I could hold in my arms. When she placed her weak little hand in mine, I was suddenly conscious of the fact that what had happened close to half a century ago wasn't just a part of someone's imagination or a part of somebody's history textbook, but reality. However, I couldn't do anything about the past, but the least I could do was help make the future better. Just by spending some time with these children, I was able to give them something that few were able to give them, time and love. This little girl changed the way I looked at service. Signed by more than 195 countries, the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child believes that every child is born with fundamental rights. The convention includes 54 articles describing the right to develop, participate, survive, and be protected. However, we still see these fundamental rights being abused daily. This is where CRY comes in. Child Rights in You is an NGO that believes by tracking and understanding a problem at its roots, we are able to work towards a solution. Over the past two summers, I had the most wonderful opportunity to travel to Delhi and work with CRY. One of CRY's project centers in Delhi is Swati, the center is based inside a very large slum area, working to provide education, nutrition, protection, and care to the underprivileged children. Swati contributes largely to the development and progression of this underprivileged community. At Swati, the children are taught basic subject skills that will allow them to develop in the future. In their eyes, you can see the raw passion and the strong motivation they have to be the best that they can. With the NGO and Swati, I worked in the slums of Delhi every day for a month 
teaching these children a new language, Spanish. And I watched them grow. I watched them develop. Not only had they understood what I was teaching them so quickly, but they had the same burning desire to learn something new every single day. When we, the volunteers and interns, teach the children, it is amazing to see the joy and growth within them. However, what hit me even harder was that a couple months later, when the head of volunteering at CRY called me up, she told me that when the kids got the opportunity to visit a national monument for a field trip, they met some Spanish tourists and were able to talk to them and speak to them in Spanish. They were absolutely ecstatic that for a moment they could step out of the world that circumstance had put them in and that for a moment they were equals with the people around them. But that wasn't enough. It was time that I brought Cry's mission statement and their line of thinking here in Jakarta working with our school's most amazing service coordinator and my most wonderful team of officers, we set up a club here at JIS that would help the underprivileged children grow by teaching them new things. When most people think of service, they think of materialistic things and pity, and that it's just a way to donate things that we have that the underprivileged might not have. But the real meaning of service is so much more than that. It's the ability to move past pity. It is important to remember that these people are just people. So people need to know that your time is all they need. Perhaps it's impossible that we change the world, but what it's, what's important is that we start small and we change the community around us. At Just Cry works towards helping the protect the rights of underprivileged children in our community by giving them a chance to a happy, healthy, creative childhood. Perhaps it's impossible to change the world, yes, but by spending some time and putting in personal effort, we are able to change their lives just by donating clothes and donating money. You can make a difference. I'm sure you can make a temporary difference, but if you were to spend some time with these very children, and with love, show them that at our core, we are all just the same. You can not only make a bigger difference, but you can change their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to stop dividing our world. It is time to stop dividing privileged and underprivileged. It is time to share what we have in abundance. Time and love. Thank you.